when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll. Whate'er my lot, thou hast caused me to say, it is blank, it is blank with my soul. No doubt, Christian, you knew the word that filled those blanks from the great Horatio Spafford hymn, It Is Well With My Soul a hymn we all cherish that was written by a heretic. Horatio Spafford, a wealthy Chicago businessman with five kids, lost one of his children, sad indeed. He was going to send his wife and four surviving children to visit with D.L. Moody on, if you will, a missions trip in Great Britain. But at the last second, a business need arose, causing him to say, Honey, take the kids and go without me. I'll join you later. And so she did. She boarded a ship to head to England. Tragically, another ship hit their vessel, sinking the boat. The wife sends a telegraph to Horatio. I alone survived. What shall I do? Uh, we don't know what she did, but we know that Father Horatio Spafford wrote the great, classic, wonderful, comforting hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. We know that backstory, but do we know the rest of the story? Horatio Spafford, he was a member of a Presbyterian church, and yet he denied most Presbyterian doctrines, and ultimately, he left the Presbyterian Church by excommunicating himself to lead a Unitarian movement, denying the divinity of Jesus Christ, believing that hell was not eternal, and all kinds of wacky behavior that the Spafferites participated in, like holy oranges, Ah. Furthermore, they were trying to raise the dead. Furthermore, they had a wonky view of marriage, as best I can understand it, because it's just a head spinner. He and his wife believed that marriage were, was really, really bad and allowed couples to sin a lot. So they encouraged the other Spafferites to get rid of their wedding rings and be promiscuous. And so she was promiscuous. More than that, they would take children away from families and disperse them because they believed that that sort of arrangement was really a cauldron for sin. That was the theology of Horatio Spafford. Did you know that? Last time you sang, It Is Well With My Soul? Hymn number two, Come Thou Font, of every blessing. Who has not sung that great hymn, perhaps at the top of your lungs? Maybe you were a little confused about, here you raise your Ebenezer, but other than that, we love that hymn. But do we know the man who wrote that classic? Robert Robinson. This was a fellow who lived in the 1700s. He claimed to be converted under the preaching of George Whitfield. No way! He was a Baptist minister, and he preached against Unitarianism. And yet, before he died, he became one. In fact, one of his last sermons, just days before he died, he was denouncing the divinity of Jesus Christ. He was Arian in his theology. In other words, he was a heretic, and yet he penned a hymn that we love. Come, thou font of every blessing. <laughs> Did you know that backstory? Now, perhaps you're thinking to yourself, that was a big bummer. You're raining on our great hymn parade. Why did you bring that up? To just wreck a couple of great hymns for me? No, it is to answer a mailbag question. Here we go. This was sent in from lots of people. If you think we shouldn't sing non-heretical worship songs from heretical groups today, that's correct, should we sing non-heretical songs from heretics that are dead? Short answer, no. 
No, I don't. These days, most popular music that is being sung in perhaps most evangelical churches is coming from, to say the least, questionable sources. And I have encouraged worship leaders and pastors to protect the flock from worship that on the surface it might appear to be theologically sound, and let's just say it is, but the people who wrote it isn't. This is a danger. Here is the trend in evangelical Christianity. Popular worship songs written by groups that have been denounced as being unchristian. They intentionally use the music to do what? Attract the attention mostly of youth. In other words, it is the bait to bring them into their movement, the hook, bad teaching. Much, so much of popular music these days written by non-Christian groups. The music itself, it passes a pretty low bar theological sniff test. So let's just say it's not heretical, but it's written by somebody who is. I encourage worship leaders, oh please, don't sing that music in your church. Why? Because the kids will hear the song perhaps somewhere else. They like the music. They hear the church affirming it by singing it as a congregation, and they assume the source is trustworthy. And countless families, I kid you not, have been absolutely wrecked. Countless parents mourning the loss of their kids. They didn't die, but they departed following the people who wrote the music that they absolutely love. And when we sing it as a church, we're basically telling the youth, we're okay with the people who wrote that song. I do not think that is wise. But what about singing some of the great classic hymns that were also written by, in this case, downright heretics? I say, it's okay. I will tell you up front, I could be <clears throat> I could be <clears throat> not right about this, but I, I don't think it's the same thing. Why? Because they're dead. There is no danger that somebody is going to hear a Horatio Spafford hymn and look for him on the internet and then go join his cult. Nobody is going to go following after Robert Robinson and his Unitarianism. They can't because they're dead. And so while it might sound like a bit of a double standard, I don't think that it is. So please keep singing, It Is Well With My Soul. Keep singing robustly, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing. But please consider long and hard singing contemporary songs that are written by people with wonky theology. Everybody has known for a long time that training indigenous pastors is the best way to impact the church in another culture. It is critically important that we invest in training men to preach the Word of God. Strong pastors in strong churches impact the entire culture from the inside. But if they're to be sent, they must first be trained in the Scripture. And that is the vision of TMAI.